Hi, I'm Natasha, the Education and Promotion Manager at the South East Regional Centre for Urban Land Care, or CIRCLE, which is based in Perth, Western Australia. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a reptile which depends on us to keep its home healthy, clean and intact. You will learn about why the animal on which this soft toy is based is so unique and what we can do to ensure its survival. This species of turtle is endemic to the southwest corner of Western Australia. They live in freshwater habitats, including rivers, lakes, farm dams, swamps, damp lands, and natural and constructed wetlands. Its scientific name is Caladina collii. However, it was previously known as Caladina oblonga. This is because they used to think it and another species of turtle that lives in the north of Australia were the same species, when in fact they are different species, so they needed different scientific names. Its common name is the southwestern snake neck turtle because of where it's located and its long snake like neck. When lining up its prey, the southwestern snake neck turtle sways its head slightly whilst pulled back in a snake like S shape before they strike out at lightning speed. Their strike speed is the fastest of any Australian freshwater turtle. As well as having had different scientific names, this turtle has also had lots of different common names in the past and they all describe something about it. It was once called the side neck turtle. Because it can't pull its head and neck back into its shell like other turtles to protect itself, it puts its neck around the side of its shell and underneath its shell instead. It is also called the oblong turtle because while most turtles have a round shell, the southwestern snake neck turtle has an oval or oblong shaped shell. And the name you may know it by, the long neck turtle, is because unlike a lot of turtles, it has a very long neck. The southwestern snake neck turtle has names for each of its body parts. At the end of their long neck, they have their head, on which they have two eyes, a mouth, and two nostrils. Turtles use their long neck a bit like a snorkel, with the nostrils on the end allowing them to breathe whilst the rest of their body is still under the water. They don't have any teeth, but they have strong jaws and use the claws at the end of their legs for digging and breaking food apart. Their webbed feet are used for swimming and help them to move faster through the water, just like we do when we wear flippers while swimming. The shell is made up of bones and it grows with them, so they can't get a new one if something happens to it. The top of the shell is called the carapace and the bottom of the shell is called the plastron and they are joined by a bridge. The shell is covered in scoops, which are plates of skin made up of keratin, which is the same stuff that makes up our finger and toenails. Males have a longer tail than females, however the females are larger in size. The vent contains the reproductive organs of the turtles, and in the females it is where the eggs will come out. So who knows the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? The main difference is that a turtle lives mostly in water, whilst tortoises live on land. A turtle can live in fresh water like the southwestern snake neck turtle or in salt water like sea turtles. Freshwater turtles have webbed feet with claws. Marine or sea turtles have flippers. Both leave the water to lay their eggs. A tortoise lives on land. They have big clumpy feet and much more rounded shells. No tortoises live naturally in Australia. Southwestern snake neck turtles are considered the apex predator in the aquatic food chain, which is why they prefer to remain in the water whenever possible. They are generalist feeders and opportunistic carnivores. Adult turtles eat frogs, tadpoles, fish, marron, and macroinvertebrates such as insects, crustaceans, snails, and worms. They will even eat baby water birds. Hatchlings or baby turtles eat aquatic plants and midge and mosquito larvae. To catch their prey, they use the gape and suck feeding method, whereby the turtle will strike out quickly at prey passing by using the swaying S-shaped movement of the head and enlarge the mouth cavity, which then sucks the prey into its mouth like a vacuum. Male and female southwest and snake neck turtles get together from June to September to mate. When the weather is right, usually on a very overcast, cloudy day during September to January, the female turtle will leave the wetland to go in search of a spot to lay her eggs. She might have to walk up to 800 metres from the water to find a suitable location. When she finds a nice sandy spot, she digs a hole up to 30 centimetres deep using one foot then the other. After each egg is laid, she positions it using her back feet. 
She lays between two and 16 eggs, which she covers first with sand and then grass or leaf litter using both feet before compacting the site with her plastron. She will then return to the wetlands. She can do this up to three times during the two distinct nesting seasons, the first of which occurs in spring between September to November and the other during summer from December to January. The eggs will remain in the sand incubating for about 220 days, after which the turtles will hatch out of their eggs and walk back to the wetland. When they are born, the turtles are only very small with the shell as big as a 20 cent coin, so they have a long way to travel. One or two might make it back to the wetland alive and grow big enough to start the life cycle again. In the wild, southwestern snake neck turtles can live for between 30 and 40 years. In the water, turtles are at the top of the food chain, so don't need to be worried about predators. Out of the water, however, the adults, babies and eggs are at risk of being eaten by feral and native animals, including foxes, dogs, black rats and birds such as ravens, ducks, cormorants and magpies. When moving around out of the water, turtles also have to watch out for road traffic and barriers that stop them from moving from place to place. Adults and babies can be run over as they cross roads which are built too close to water bodies. Fences around wetlands and box-shaped curbs on the side of the road stop them from getting where they need to be. Another big problem for turtles is all of the development taking place on the water bodies and surrounding bushland they live in and the amount of pollution entering the remaining wetlands. The places where they live are being destroyed to make way for houses and other buildings and the water they swim in is being polluted by too many nutrients, which causes algae blooms. Too much algae makes it difficult for turtles to swim and means they have less food available as the algae stops the light getting to the plants and uses up the oxygen in the water. And this causes the plants and animals that turtles eat to die. So if you see a turtle when you are out and about, should you pick it up? Well, there are only two reasons you should pick up a turtle. The first reason is if they are in danger, such as when they are crossing a road. After you have made sure it is safe to go onto the road, you can pick them up and take them to the other side of the road in the same direction in which they are travelling. Don't take them back to the wetland as they know where they are going and chances are it is a female that needs to find somewhere to lay her eggs. The second reason is if the turtle is hurt, such as with a cracked shell. In this case, put it in a box and take it to the nearest native animal rescue centre which if you're in Perth, Western Australia, could mean visiting Native Ark in Coburn, the Armidale Reptile Centre, or calling the Wildcare Helpline on 9474 9055, and that will direct you to someone who can help take care of the injured animal. If you are picking up a southwestern snake neck turtle, hold it as shown in the photo, with your thumbs on the carapace or top of the shell, and your fingers on the plastron or bottom of the shell, so that the turtle's claws, head and neck are pointing away from you. One reason to hold the turtle like this is so that you can't be scratched. But the other reason is because when they feel threatened, southwestern snake neck turtles can release a very smelly, oily substance from a scent gland near their tail, and it would be most unpleasant to be on the receiving end of a spray of it. To help protect the southwestern snake neck turtles, there are a couple of things you can do. Your school can become a Turtle Watch accredited school by going to the A squared E squared WA website. If you see a turtle while you're out and about, you can go to the Climate Watch website and record where and when you saw it. This will help the scientists and people who are looking after the turtles know more about them. But the main thing we can all do to help protect our unique southwestern snake neck turtles is to protect our wetlands, rivers and the surrounding bushland from pollution and development. The southwestern snake neck turtles and all of us here at the Phosphorus Awareness Project at Circle would like to thank you for listening.